Thanks a lot from France, Lyon, France. Um, I'm a Polaris teacher, I'm balanced with the master and director here in France. Used to be a dancer. I'm, I guess I'm still a dancer. You're always a dancer. Um, uh, worked in New York, studied with the Alvin Ailey School, then worked um, with uh, several companies in New York and got my certification through postdoc many years ago and moved back to France in 2009. That's grossly about my, you know, about me. Nice. Uh, so in terms of your Pilates journey itself, like when did you find Pilates in, in the midst of your dance career? And when did you decide that this is going to be your career? Um, I discovered Pilates in New York while I was at the early school. Back then it wasn't called um, Pilates. It was called body conditioning um, taught by Wendy Amos. And, um, and I loved it. it. It felt good on my body. And I walked around and I looked for a studio in New York City. And I, I did find one and I started taking uh, Pilates classes, um, reformer classes mainly. And um, a while back then after I got an injury in my shoulders and I had, to, I had to stop for six months and I had to do something. So I decided to and go and get my certification, which I did through postdoc. And it was something to do back then. I wasn't thinking about being a Pilates teacher because I was a full-time dancer. So I got my certification um, a year and a half later, and then I got a job. So I would teach at several studios when I wasn't traveling, um, when I wasn't on tour. And um, then in 2007, I stopped all my dancing. I stopped my contract, and I started teaching full-time um, parties in New York at several studios, and uh, and then that was that was the start of a long love story. Because from that point on, um, it has been parties. I moved back to France, thinking I was going to dance because I was still young, and basically okay. uh, the parties just took over, and I had no time to dance, no time to audition, and then um, that was that was about it. And I still kicking and screaming and killing people and you know so <laughs> and that's good <laughs> so that's that's my um that's my my uh what that's how i started parties i started parties because we had you know our parties classes at la and um i i love the fact that um i could learn more about the body and i could learn why my body, my body hurt and why uh, my hip hurt and why my shoulder hurt yes um and and from that point on i i did parties and i would i used to take a parties class then a ballet class then five hours rehearsal and the parties will be either before or after rehearsal and uh, and from that point i never had any injury um, related to to my my dance, you know, so uh, so that was great. Amazing. So that's how uh, it started, and um, and I'm pretty good. And I, because of Polaris, I met people like you and Misty, Diva. So <laughs> I mean, that's the best part of it, right? I mean, aside from the fact that we look great and we feel great, we get to do what we I'm love, but we you, meet amazing it people is. like. I mean, I'm sure accountants feel the same thing, feel the same it's way, the same. but you not know, at it's all. Just really not the same. <laughs> they're they're just you. Um, how did you guys meet? How did you see you and Fabrice? When, when did you guys first meet? Okay, um, actually, we Grace? met. I knew Misty because I because she's a balanced body faculty, so I knew of Misty. But we actually met because we sat on the uh, board um, uh, for the. Uh, uh, help me see the uh, uh, <laughs> program that's uh, community expansion so scholarship. We, sat on board, you know, we actually yeah. met through yeah. that, and uh, and we've been doing a lot of stuff with um, Tonya as well. So that's why I was telling you see that we're gonna see each other a lot for the next couple of months because we have to go through you know a lot of applicants through that so so we met we met through that through um the 
the community expansion program actually by balance really Yes. And, you know, I've been following Fabrice because he's an MI, obviously, master instructor with Balanced Body. But just also, again, like, there's not enough men, I, I think, doing Pilates. So I always want to follow and support when I come across someone. But then on top of it, somebody that just exemplifies what powerful movement looks like but you know, doesn't look like Senor inflated chest. You know, his chest is so big that he can't scratch his butt. Uh, you know, like power, seeing that power and seeing that strength and the fluidity and the effortlessness that comes from being a dancer, but also comes from having just a well-trained body overall. He really, I mean, like he exemplifies that. And Absolutely. you know, when I, I like to follow, especially for Pilates, you know, I like to follow people who do the work in a way that I think should be shared and known. So uh, if he's yeah. a logical, obvious choice. Um, but then I got to know him. I got to know about the fact that he's from Guadalupe and, you know, he's just a really, really cool guy. That's the part, right? Like I, that's the thing. Cause it's one thing if they're just like that good and act like they're that good. <laughs> like, right. Just, just down to earth and just does this thing and you know from our last conversation you're just like i'm, I'm a woman. i mean I'm a, I, right? I'm, like I'm, uh, I'm a dancer so i'm a performer so uh um it, it's it's interesting because when i i started pilates um my teacher used to tell me that it was too flaky and back then I was young, so I was I wanted to perform everything. So as a Pilates teacher, I was Pilates, I was performing the, the work. <laughs> and um, fifteen years later, uh, I really I, I I now know what she was talking about because because I'm a performer, it comes easy for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you give me the you give me a movement, and I'll do it. And maybe I won't do it from. Um, and I'll go back to that from what one, one of my, my teacher would tell me from the center, from the core, because back then I was, I, I just wanted to perform everything. So I would do the, the exercise uh, so easily. Then 20 years later, uh, going through categories yes. mentor program, and I realized what he was, my teacher 20 years later was telling me that, uh, it's easy for you, so you're just performing it. Now I need, I need you to do the exercise for me. And I realized that where I need to know where mm -hmm. the movement comes from and not from my, the facility that I have, because I can just make it happen, but from, um, from within, you know? And then I, I grew as yes. a teacher and, and yeah. as, a, as a performer, as a practitioner, because uh, I switch the way I was doing it. I still perform because I'm not going to take that away, but I'm performing differently. I know where the movement mm -hmm. comes from. Then I can do it uh, from deep in, in yes. deep within, you know? So, um, so going back to the, 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 uh, the performance and, and, and the exercise being easy for me, it, it, it is. And even exercise that it's, I mean, I do have my nemesis, like everybody. I have my worst, who became my, my best because I worked on it and um, I made it my best. But yeah. uh, the teaser on the chair was the worst because I have long legs. So sitting on the chair with your legs that high, you feel like your 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 so what's gonna rip apart, you know. And that was the worst to go and sit on the chair and to do the teaser twist. I hate, I hated it. Now I love it because I mm. worked on it yeah. and I know where the movement come from and not doing it from your arms and from your uh, yes. uh, hands, but doing it from your core. And now it's, it, it became my, my best. So um, working and make it your, your, your best. It's, it's the best reward, rewarding thing ever. So. So that's um, that's 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 where my my performing coming up, and I will perform always. I do perform because that's me. Again, 
if I work with someone and I do work with people who are injured, I work with all the clients. And of course, I'm not asking them to perform anything because um, we're not there for that. Um, right. And when my, I had my hip issue and I had my hip surgery, I wasn't performing anything. I was working on my hip and I was working on getting better. So, um, so if there's a time to perform, right. there's a time to work with on tiny little things and there's a time to put all that together and, and give, give your best. Yeah, it is. Well, and teaching is a performance too. You know, especially at presenting as a as a mentor or whatever, there's still an element of performance that goes along with that. Um, and and I, I think that when it's in you, it's in you. Uh, but I completely get what you're saying about you know having to go beyond that performance when you're taking the work in and and really embody it and agreed like that's one of the reasons why I think a lot of people don't really fall in love with Pilates is because they still are focused on that output what does it look like definitely well that kind of lends to this question of both of you having a dance and a performance background there's times when I'm training my people with an athletic background not that dance is an athletic but from a sport background when I'm talking with people and they look at me like you're an athlete and I'm just a regular person doing exercise. And then I appeal to them to do something athletic or they do something. I'm like, that's an athletic move. And I'm like giving them an opportunity to be an athlete in the work. Do you do that as dancers when even with someone who is coming with an injury and they finally get to a place of getting some mastery with an exercise, do you give them that moment to perform? Yes, they can? of course, of course. I mean, I do, I do, um, I, I'm working with young athletes, so the, they do karate, and dance is not their thing at all. But um, they, um, they have their right. training, they have what they do uh, for the competition, but there's something missing. And we're working in the studio on what's missing. So looking on flexibility, we're working on, on getting, working the deeper muscle and not the superficial because what they do mostly is to work the big muscles. Yes. So um, from time to time, I, I ask them to perform and I would ask them to perform within their uh, um, uh, skills. Yeah, yeah. But like some their ability, their skills. Yeah. As a dancer, right. I think they can use some of the uh, the, 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 the pointer I'll give them for stretch, for example. So from them, I'll give them mm -hmm. a sequence on stretch and I'll give them the pot de bras. They don't use the pot de bras in their work, but I give them the pot de bras so they will perform within their skills, but adding mine as well. So, um, and they're not at all in a performance mood because they're doing karate. Maybe they're performing when they do competition, but not the same as us. But uh, in a studio, they get a chance to perform and uh, within their skills. Sure. Yeah. And I think that that's just part of the making the work show up or helping them show up for the work as they need it. You know, yeah. sometimes you'll have a client or student who needs to muscle up, air quotes, and mm -hmm. present it. Um, to themselves in a more athletic way, you know, rather than being very delicate about the movement. So, you know, you cue them into that. However, other times you need them to draw away from that. Maybe they do need to yes. find that in their artistry because for them, find, going deep means tapping into something other than the muscle. It's about finding the flow. It's about fly, yeah. finding the rhythm, you know, yes. finding their inner tempo and, mm -hmm. I may be just kind of projecting, but I kind of feel like when you find that inner drumbeat, that inner current, you can upregulate, downregulate the movement however you need it, need to. And it does become a performance. It, to me, anyway, it looks more like a dance, but in the best of ways, you know, when you're dancing, even when you're performing, if you're really deep within, you know, there's a big difference when you watch a dancer who's just dancing for you versus a dancer who's immersed, 
who's just lost in the movement. And I find that that happens, that can happen in a Pilates yeah. setting, even in a group class, if you give people the permission to explore what that looks like and what definitely, that feels like. Definitely. Um, I mean, the performance, the performance component mm -hmm. of it is, um, should, I mean, is there, it, sh it should be there and it's there all the time. Um, regardless if we, um, because it can be just doing the footwork, your footwork and you're giving the rhythm and you're giving uh, the breath and the breath, the rhythm and uh, your inner uh, 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 drum, drum uh, beat, like you said, Misty, uh, all that gets together and you performing, of course, you know? Yeah. This is a really a sensitive topic, right? Because, like, I mean, the, the conversation you talk about Pilates not being a performance, I think that we package this in a way where we're, we're giving that individualized approach to what people need as opposed to saying, dance for me, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, yes, because it still has to be about them. Right. And, you know, what does performance mean to them or what does being deep within mean to them? You know, if I said to you know, one person, I need you to go deep with this, they might think I'm asking them to you know, go sit on the mountain and, you know, meditate. Mm -hmm. And so they're like completely checked mm -hmm. out because they're just trying to even figure out what that means. Right. But with other people, you know, that comes more naturally, but they go in too deep and, you know, they're not even aware of what's place. going on because they're, they're, they're just in the tornado. So yes. it's, that's the whole part about getting to know who you're working with and really recognizing that everybody is an individual. Debbie mm. Robbins from Air Control Pilates just asked us a question. What is performance? Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I love that um, pregnant pause and we all what is performance? Is performance <laughs> is to to give a little bit of yourself in anything you do. I mean that's why I, I again that's why I'm saying I'm a performer and I will always be a performer. And when I sit on my reformer or my chair, uh, whatever I do, I perform it because um I wanna be good at it i want to be the best at it i want to be make it look good and i want uh, uh the people to know and to see and to feel where the movement comes from so for me that's performing uh, that's that's my definition of it uh, for me see might be something different mm -hmm. similar no i i would say to keep it simple i would say it's to show out you know, when I'm thinking about what a performance is and when I'm thinking about when I'm performing just the general blanket word performance, I am thinking of what I am demonstrating, sharing, giving, mm -hmm. output, output, output. But there is a point where I need to embody that so that I'm also performing for myself. Um, and maybe right. the word changes from performance, you know, or maybe it maybe there's this much performance versus this much embodiment versus this much, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. however you want to break it down. But um, I think that you can still perform showing out while mm. sure. staying in. Sure. Tapping in. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I, mine's, I think mine kind of comes, uh, I use the term podium performance a lot. And, and what I mean by that is you think about an Olympic performance, everyone has their podium performance. So for my clients who are Pilates people who are also my personal training clients and they come back from a weekend and they say, we got all the soil in our driveway and I went back and forth through the house with a wheelbarrow 19 times and I'm back today and, I, and I'm not sore. I'm like, we train for that. That's your podium performance. Or, you know, I chase grandkids all around all weekend and my knees aren't hurting me like they used to that's your podium performance. So for me, it's okay, you were able to do the things that you used to do, you didn't think you'd be able to do anymore, or you're surprised that you could still do because of the training we're doing. So for you, that's your podium performance, much like for someone else that may be winning a Super Bowl or getting a gold medal. So that's kind of the way that I frame that from All right. my yeah. perspective. Yeah, good. 
<laughs> Sold. All right. <laughs> and done. Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. See you guys tomorrow. That was great. Um, so, Fabrice, I asked you before, too, like, what's your message for your people? And we kind of got on the topic there about, like, growing together and getting better and learning from one another sort of thing. Like, just in terms of what you're seeing happening in, in the potty space. Can you just um, talk to that a little bit? I, th I think we, we, um, we as a community, we, we, we do things on, on our side. I do my little thing, you do your little thing, and um, we might meet at one point for, for, for something, but we don't grow together. We don't use, um, I mean, use each other to grow and to move on and to get better. And I think that the message will be to mm -hmm. work with, with the other, work with one another in order to, to, to grow and to grow as a community, to grow as a group. And, um, and the work will be easier and the journey will be easier because you're using your peer to, to move forward. And, to, and I think today we are, we are individual doing our thing on our side. And, uh, and so it makes it harder to go forward and to grow. So that would be my message today for my people, for the community uh, today. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and I also think that building a community, it sounds really daunting for people, right? It, it sounds like, oh, that's more output. That's more, you know, I'm bogged down. But I have to give somebody else on this call kudos. Debbie from Air Control here on this call, mm -hmm. one of the best community builders around you know, starting with this product that she built and grew herself and, you know, bringing along these, you know, building bridges between the aerial community and the Pilates community and showing people that there is common ground and parity and let's grow together. You know, it, the community piece is important because while being an, on an island, so to speak, is, is nice and well and good, there's no diversity of thought and there's no richness of just different experiences that comes from being a part of a community. So, um, you know, I love that idea. And Fabrice and I, we do that with, we're working on that with Balanced Body. And I know so many people out there are, are, are looking for that, craving that now, especially coming out of what we've been through. Mm -hmm. The idea of community, I think, is what keeps us human. So you know, we have to keep looking to Definitely. expand in that way. That, that common unity, right? Just playing on that word and finding people who are of a similar like-mindedness. What about complementing it with other disciplines or people who have a different area of expertise within our plotty space? So for example, if we're talking uh, athleticism, for me to partner with someone who focuses on... Um, corrective exercise instead of trying to be all things for all people are we do we have those people in our network that we can refer out to so i don't have to master working with scoliosis or, or working with uh obese clients or people that have whatever it is that like we can we can find our expertise and then partner with someone in a totally opposite but complementary expertise and just lend to it on one of those work in that way yeah. too. I mean, that's where the community so come, you know, come from. Because if you know someone who works with a scoliosis people, so you send your client to that person because you have, uh, 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 because you don't have time and you have, you have, you know, the space in your in your schedule to to do it. So using the people you know within the community to yep. uh, give them the work first of all, help them out. And, 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 and use yep. their skills, of course. Yeah. So I think that this is a very important. Yeah. Well, and I think that in Pilates land, as well as a lot of other lands, we get into this idea of the only way we can be successful is to know everything about everything. And, you know, I want to know pre and postnatal. I want to know scoliosis. Right. I want to know all of these Diet. things. And I'm going to like <laughs> suck it all up. But you know, who, 
I get the idea of a one-stop shop when I'm like running around for groceries. But the fact is, I feel like I am better if I do the things that I'm great at and I share the wealth. Like this person down the road does this way better than I do. And you know, your clients too are gonna be like, well, are you sure I should go see somebody else? Yeah. But if you've established that Hi. trust, they're high libraries. They are yeah, thrilled that you took the time to give them that referral and that only widens your net. Definitely. Which is Absolutely. a great thing. I love how John Gary John Gary put this the other day. He said like he hires people that he would like to take classes from, one. And he hires people that he thinks are better teachers than him. Yes. That's great. Yes. Yeah, I tell everybody in my training, my goal is for you to be a better teacher than me so I can come and take your class. And sometimes they say, <laughs> I will never, ever let you take my class ever. I mean, this, I, my friend Chelsea, yes. who works with me, I, she's been <laughs> teaching with me since 2017. I've still taken 0, 0.0 of her classes. She will not allow it. But again, you know, yeah. who wants to have the keys, the, the, be the holder, the sole holder of the keys to the kingdom? Everybody knows about this. Mm -hmm. Try home ownership. When you are the sole owner of that house, you're responsible for the gutters. You're responsible for the lawn. When the critters mm -hmm. dig into your plants, you are responsible for taking care of those little furry bastards. <laughs> I, it's yeah. still a little close, Martin. It's a little close. sore. Yeah. A little sore. Yeah. The wound's um, open. <laughs> the wound is sleeping. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's there's something to be said for wanting to grow your skills. But to do it alone when... Exactly. I don't know, it's kind of a lonely world. Make friends. Invite them in. When am I taking your chair class? You know, I need it so much. With everything going on in my world and with my mom, I haven't had a chance to take any classes in a long time. So let's talk <laughs> about that sooner rather than later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, those are the classes. So now, but I just want to go back to that, uh, your, your colleague who will never take your class with you. That, I, I She'll never like, let me take her class. Yeah, sorry, yes. That's what the, I always try and pounce on that because there's this, and not to knock her, but like when people get in that place where like they freeze when certain people walk in the room, right? Like that, whether, you know, like give them that confidence, give them that empowerment. Like, like you know, they're not going to, you're not going to criticize or you're not going to tear her down. Oh, your toe was this way when you're teaching that, you know, that sort of thing, right? Like. Yeah, you know, um, I had to have a talk with her about that because, of, well, and this is, it, it happens all the time. And, you know, I was like, you know, kind of makes me feel kind of bad that you're, I mean, do you think I'm going to like eviscerate you? Do you think when I'm taking class, I'm like running my inner notepad? Like, and she said, no, not at all. She said, you're my mentor. And I'm so wrapped up in the idea of doing you right and making you proud that I can't get beyond it. And it's not you, it's me. And I'm like, <laughs> really? Because it sounds like maybe you have PTSD. <laughs> it sounds like, you know, you're going through the DTs. And she's like, no, that's not it at all. So, and then we were talking to another girl that teaches with me. And she's like, yeah, Misty popped into my class. And the, Chelsea, the other one was like, you know, see, that's why she can't pop into my class. <laughs> and I'm like, but wait, guys, I thought it was all good. <laughs> and she said, no, it's just, once again, it's like, you know, some people when they're walking down the street and they see a movie star and they can't even speak, but they want to speak. She said, yeah. it's like that when you pop in my <laughs> class. And I'm still not sure how I feel about it. But, you know, I, I recognize that. <laughs> oh, see, here's Debbie. Yes, I'm going to read <laughs> Debbie's comment here. I was nervous. I was nervous teaching Misty on the first day. She was amazing. So open to learning and let me shine in what I do know. It was an honor. And I always Debbie say is that. so giving with information and yes. you know, yes. she's so bubbly and effervescent. Like I was so excited to be in the space to learn from this person who just presents everything with wonder. Yes. I mean, it's incredible to work with her. So, I love that. you know, and we had such a great time. I, I am, 
I don't have a physical studio anymore and I will never. So I'm coming to you, <laughs> Debbie, next time. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you find that I as well? Do, like people are intimidated to teach you because I have some stuff. of my yeah. um my student or or, or, or future teacher or where um they have to um come in and do their hours and they have you know real clients and I'll just pop up and sit and take the class and then they'll just turn blue. I'm like, what's going on? I mean, what's, go <laughs> what's going on? I mean, this is me, you know me. I, and the fact that it's me sitting and taking the class, they just froze and, um, and there's no reason. Uh, but th again, that's, that's, I mean, I'm not gonna that's... judge, but I'm taking, I'm taking the class for me, for, for me. So I'm not there to judge you, to take notes, yes. to you know, just taking the class. So just teach me and fine, I'm good with that. So, but it is, it is, it can be, uh, I mean, it can be, we, we are the mentors. So it can be uh, uh, scary to, to teach your mentor sometimes. So, <laughs> well, for sure, real talk. And for those in the chat, just out of curiosity, show of hands, if you've ever been intimidated teaching uh, a mentor or someone you've esteemed highly in the work. Just, just quick show of hands if that if you've been in that situation, and how did you get over it is the bigger question. And while that's populating, I'll just say that people forget that no matter what level you are in the work, exactly. you still need work. It's not like, oh well, I'm a, a master teacher, so now I've like hit the holy grail I'm there I've got it I it's just magic now it just kind of flows through the skylights into the heavens you know into my body no I still need to keep up with my skills I need class and you know if I'm doing a lot of teaching I need more class because I've not been getting that in and I personally do not like to train myself because I'm a big cheater and I don't like to do the things that I don't like to do. I will never do the sideline series, never. I mean, I'll lay down on my side and I'll start thinking about popcorn. And I'm like, oh, this workout's over, yes. you know? I, I don't do want to do one round on. Like, okay, that's good, other side. That's right, that's right, yeah. I do not want to do it. So I'm not gonna put myself through the things that I just absolutely abhor. So I need to be in that space. So, you know, should I come to wherever you are to take class from you? Please don't like look me up and be like, oh, okay, there's a teacher in the room. We are going to do the class of death. It's gonna be the Bhutan Pilates death march because that's what happens. That is what happens really? to us, you know, when we go in yeah. and you know, the, the worst thing in the world is Google. If you're a Pilates teacher and you just want to take class yeah. out of town, they're prepared because they're they get you. you. Then they try to kill to, you. Like, make you work. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. All right. Well, clearly I'm not at that elite status where people yeah. Google. Oh, me not and oh, I bet you are sure. now, Martin. I'm telling you. You guys, no, you guys, you guys are both like fantastic movers. So I'm sure that happens. Um, and, but you know, actually, and like, that was just saying that in jest, but I find that when I have teachers in the room and when I'm teaching in those situations, my challenge is what can I see? What can I find? And maybe I'll be the one to give them some suggestion or some cue that unlocks something for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that we all have that opportunity because we all come from a different perspective you can have a brand new teacher in a teacher training take you through an exercise and you'd be like, I've never heard it like that. I've never seen it like that. Or that made me find it in a different place. Yeah. So I think that, you know, I, that's my challenge as a teacher when I go into those situ situations. And for those intimidated teachers, when you have someone come into the room, they're looking for that cue. They're looking for that, that you know, because we're all working on something. So there's always something that we can learn. There's always opportunity to learn. I think that's what I was getting to. And uh, so, yeah, find it. Like, you know, look for that opportunity to learn something from that new person. You never know what you're going to say that's going to just exactly. unlock something for that teacher Definitely. in the room. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I used to, when I first started teaching teachers, I, I would get so freaked out when I knew that there was going to be a physical therapist in the group. 
because mm -hmm. you know that is like imposter syndrome times a million like I, here's a person with letters after their name and you know i tell everybody i just added <laughs> hijk element p after my name on my business card just to have some letters there but i don't have any really and you know so i'm like freaked out because this person knows everything about the body mm -hmm. and, and, you know i learned over time because people were humble and they did tell me you know hey listen i i got something out of this i know you were worried because you turned a little bit green but you know and i invite in my my trainings if someone has you know some sort of specialized course, yeah. training i invite them to share too because yeah. I don't have it all and I don't want it all. But when somebody else has something that I don't have, I, my ego is certainly not going to be allowed to keep me or keep mm -hmm. the information away from the other people that are in the Definitely. group. Yep. I had, uh, that, that reminds me of when I was a like, young in this work and I went to this Pilates uh, and gait workshop. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about your feet and all those things. And there's a lot of physiotherapists in the room as well as Pilates people. And they had us get in a group of three or four. They talked about some exercises and then they said, get one of you to stand up, just walk across the room and then come back and share what you see. Right. So the person gets up and they walk across the room they walk back and I'm like, that looks really good. The person next to me started to name off every muscle <laughs> and every bone in the foot and how there's a pronation <laughs> and supination. And you're like this. <laughs> yes. And I was like, I can't pronounce half the words you're saying right now. Um, I didn't know that those were muscles and you're still talking and I'm thinking, okay, well, that was the last that I contribute to this group today. Um, we put that on people, right? Like, so I, you know, I, I remember that because then whenever I'm teaching something now, like you said, like lend to the exper expertise, but then also get people to see and, and grow from where they're at instead mm -hmm. of letting that person posture up with what they know. Right. So. Yeah. It's happened. Yeah. It's happened to all yeah. of us. That's but, always fun. Uh, but then we, uh, again, we all, we learn from one and one another. So uh, if there's a physiotherapist or, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you learn, you learn from, so you don't know everything and that person, you're going to learn something from, from that person and the person is going to learn something from you. So there's no reason to be, um, to be scared and afraid. So. Mm. True. Yes. Even within oh, I... facts, there's wiggle room. Right. Yes, absolutely. Uh, unrelated question for Breeze. Is there um, Tony Parker? Is he working yeah, in the he, area? Basketball? The, was, yeah, yeah. He opened I think I read center, something in some documentary. Um, in Lyon. There's a big, yeah, there's a big uh, center. Okay. Um, not far from here. In Lyon. Yeah. Okay. Tony, Tony Parker is, was yeah. a point guard for San Antonio Spurs, NBA champion. He's from France, like Phenom. Uh, came in as a young guy and he's from France. So there's a documentary. Yeah, yeah. So you I mean, open I a big, uh, a big center. It's a training center for 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 a young athlete, young um, basketball players. So they come in and they train, and it's pretty big. So it's pretty cool, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. Amazing. Have you have you worked with them? No, no, no. Never worked with them. No, no, no. Worked with them with athlete. I work with athlete, but um, I'm more uh, I do karate or dancers, or I don't do basketball players. Yet, maybe in the future. Okay. Yet, yet, yes. Because I like to. I don't do basket, so I need to Man. learn about what I'm gonna work with. So when I started working with a young karateka, I went to the competition. I went to the dojo. I what they need, what they missing, and yes. what I can give them because they have their training. So I don't want to. Um, you know, I want to help them, you know, get that middle. So I need to look mm -hmm. for, look at their training and look for, look for what they were missing. And in the studio, we do work on that lacking, yes. you know, so, and I need to do the same thing. So for now I have, I haven't started starting playing basketball yet. So I have to start playing some, then I will try to start to work with, with them eventually. <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah, it's so funny, you know, like I, 
I, I personally just, as an athlete, I like to do that, play the sport to understand the sport. Of course. But you understand But movement. you need to understand what they're training and what's missing in their training in order to help them. Uh, because I, I mean, I, I, I don't do, I don't play yes. basketball. So, uh, if in order to help them, I need to know uh, the the principle of their training and what's missing in that mm-hmm. in that sense. In that, I'm not just I agree to play basketball, yeah. but to understand in their process, in yes, their training yes. process, what's missing and what I can give them. Right. It's yeah. not no. like you're trying to become an expert. To understand. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, get a feel for it. When I started teaching Pilates for golf, I started golfing, which is yep. um, you know, something I never thought I would do. I do kind of like it, but you know, golf, no one it's really the... likes it. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's just really something that you it. do so that you can hate yourself and yeah. others and then have snacks afterwards right. and drive a cart really fast <laughs> and hopefully not drop anyone out of the side. But You know, I had some, I definitely had some preconceived notions about what golf movement felt like Mm -hmm. that, you know, I had to play to really get to know and understand that maybe wasn't the case or wasn't the case because of the things that I thought it was, Um, you know, so, and, and the same with basketball and just, you know, how you load when you're going up into a layout layup like the way that mm-hmm. feels in your body the way that translates you can watch it a thousand times but you don't sure. know it until you try it you know yes. yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. here's a story yeah, i played basketball in the seventh and eighth grade and i wouldn't say that i necessarily played basketball basketball played played me because, you know, when you're only 5'4", and I've been 5'4 <laughs> since the seventh grade, um, you know, it's, it's, the sport is a little different when you're looking at everybody's knees, I'm just saying. Mm. Um, but it, it's such, it, it's a fun sport. It's a great sport. My nickname was the mop because I fell down a lot and I slid oh. on my chest. <laughs> But, you know, I could shoot from far away only because I'm scared because everyone's so much bigger than me. So I'm just saying, no. you know, I, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of good. Yeah. It, it's well, a good you sport, found your but, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, so luckily you yes. didn't become a True. basketball player because maybe you, you know, could have made a lot of money out of it or something, but... You know, you find the calling. (laughs) Listen, there was this girl. Her name was Kim Calhoun, and she was like (laughs) 5'11 and a half. And, you know, I'm the point guard or the shooting guard, and they would just put her in front of me, and I'd be like, come on. You know, or I'd go around, I'd go to just, you know, just bank around her, and she would just step out, and I would hit like (laughs) a, a fly hitting a windshield, just like splatter on this girl. And they would give me the foul. And I was like, why would you even give me the foul? The wall just came down on me. Why am I the one that's getting the foul? Wow. I'm just, I'm just saying. Good, Misty. Good. Wow. Yeah, so Misty's going to need some counsel. We just, we just resurfaced all of her like, basketball woes. We were just talking about this. My mom, my mom said, you know, I didn't come to the games to watch you play. I came to the games in case, like, there would be a fight and I would have to rescue you. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're going oh. into, like, these, like, real areas where, like, kids play basketball all the time. And here's my team. I'm the only person of any shade on this team, right? And we're we're yeah. bopping in. We're from the <laughs> suburbs. They're like, dun, 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 dun. we go in. And they're like, basketball is life. And we're like, oh shit, this isn't the mall. What am I gonna do here? Oh, it was, it was hilarious and terrible, and just Terrifying. some great, great memories. The coach would be like, Misty Cawthon, what are you doing? And I'd be like, I'm not gonna let them step on me. Wow. <laughs> Yep. And that's, that's why we found dance. 
<laughs> oh, I was already dancing then. I had to take a break from dance because I got hurt. And they're like, do a different sport, you know, try cross training. And I was like, of course, basketball. Yeah, right. Mm. I should have like done a point or something. I'm just saying. That's so funny. Well, yeah, basketball is no joke. I mean, like, just from a movement perspective, you're run, jump, start, stop, pivot. Like, you're you're moving in every direction. There's so many yeah. demands on the body. It's, you know, it's... And yeah. they don't appreciate grandetes <laughs> and jazz runs. They didn't like that either. And I'm saying that that might have come out sometimes. You might have. Someone's always performing over here. I'm just saying. Yes. That's yeah, but show up as you that's are. Nice. That's what I did. That's yes. There you go. That's that's like show the up lesson as, from as today. You, as you are. <laughs> yeah. That's great. the t-shirt. There you go. Too funny. That is crazy. Um, we're just like yapping away, and it's ten fifty-eight here, or what would it be there? Three fifty-eight. Four fifty-eight. Yeah, over there, Fabrice. Now you get to that fabulous dinner. I'm still waiting all. for you. Oh. I know, right? What? Okay. <laughs> I'm coming. I am coming. We 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 really need to sit down and plan it out. I speak you, no French, but we'll figure it out. Fine. And um, I'm I'm coming. You know, I I was in Paris several years ago, and I thought Paris was okay, but I really wanted to yeah. go and explore, and we just didn't have time. Wow. So I, I'm we'll really about anxious it. to get over there. <laughs> it's all part of the road trip, Misty. That's right. That's right. On the road. For uh, conversations on the road. <laughs> on the road. That was great. This that has been so talking. fun. That was great, Misty. It was Thank nice you. To see you so much. Yes. Yes. Even though we're going to be spending lots oh, of time together, it's nice to talk about something <laughs> other than interviews so <laughs> uh Fabrice, if you have um I, i'll put it in the chat afterwards like your website or any information where people can follow you do you have any online classes or i do have do uh, two with online you as classes well? that i gave on friday night um 8 30 p.m my time and wednesday um 12 okay. p.m on my time and yeah and Eight okay. thirty, and that's yeah. the one all oh, the Californians can take actually because it's like morning for them, you know. So uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and yeah. Uh, right. yeah. I'll expanding my studio Very in cool. September, so I will have group with former classes starting September. So that will be up to come. Keep you posted. Yeah. Awesome. Well, stay tuned. Cheer them on. Follow. Fabrice. Thank you, Martin. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to everyone who joined in. Labrice, thank, thank you for you. jumping in as well. And everyone else who is following along. Really appreciate everybody. Thanks. All right, party people. Thank you. This made my week. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank so you, good. Martin. Thank so you, Misty. Take care. All right. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye, Bye guys.